Exactly right. Okie dokie. So we're just going to make a quick logo. I'm going to make this 1024 by 1024. And I've got my students in the room, so if I start talking in strange sentences, I'm talking to them probably. Okie doke. So here we go. We got that. Great. And we just want white on black or black on white. If we want something 100% opaque or 100% transparent in ZBrush. And I also probably need to fix my Wacom tablet so it is not flipping things. But let's just try this. Okay, so I'm just going to go use the text editor. Might as well. And just use DB since that's my logo and it's awesome. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, let's change this to something larger than that. Looks good. <laughs> All right. Uh, I am going to just make this bigger because that's silly. All right. That looks pretty good. And so things we can do here is if I wanted to have it just be black and white and just kind of raise up where it's black and fall off where it's white, that's this will be fine. But if I wanted to, I can also add, say, an outline. If I can find the stroke, there we go. And if I change this color type to, say, gray, now it's going to have this little, like, double step as it as it pushes up or down into a surface um, there you go that's beautiful shockingly beautiful let's stick with that today all right so I'm just gonna save this off as a JPEG it could be a Photoshop file but I'm not sure if ZBrush recognizes the font so I'm just gonna stick with this Great. Can't see. There we go. All right. So here we are in ZBrush. I'm going to go to my alphas, and under alpha, import from the desktop that last image. And now I've got this. So what happens if I just drag this across? Because of my stroke type, it's just going to simply dragged and look really quite horrible right not good a um, couple things I need to do I need more resolution and I'm gonna put this actually on a flat plane so I'm gonna make that a polymesh 3d and we need to subdivide this from 1000 to a larger number so control D I'll just take that up to 1 million sounds great turn off perspective and we can do this a couple different ways. One, I could just draw on here using the drag rec. And it's going to put that there, which is kind of cool, except for that it's picking up all along these edges. So not cool enough, right? Just saying. It's kind of strange talking to you. I'm talking to this because you guys can listen to me later. Yeah. Right. I figured it out that you weren't just normally Yeah, exactly. So, so thank you. I'm going to go hold down, hold down control and bring my alpha into my, into my um, masking tool. And that way I can mask on this thing instead of, instead of using my brush. And so by doing that, if I hold down control here and and uh, we look at the brush, oh, excuse me. I'm going to turn my focal shift all the way to the left. And now, I'm going to drop this guy on. Actually, that's not going to really matter, is it? You can also, other random things we can do here under the alpha tab. You can invert this mask, which is 
wait a second. There we go. Alpha invert. There we go. And now it's going to come in like that. Okay. So what's cool about this being a mask is I can invert this thing and we can displace it. So I could use the deformation tab and inflate it, which could be kind of cool. Yay. Or I could use the move brush. Let's stick with this one. And I just want to like rip off all the stuff off the back. So to do that, I'm going to come down here to the slice, which is also located under control shift and all these different slice brushes down here. And I'm just going to chop off. Oh, and turn off my subdivisions. So a lot of these tools, you can't have subdivisions at all. You just have to delete them. So now if I were to select this, everybody behind it disappears. And it becomes a little more useful. And that way I can also go to Modify Topology, and I can just delete Hidden. And now this is a useful piece of geometry. It's 277,000 polygons, which I think is going to be too big for what I want it for. So I'm going to zero mesh that and see if we get lucky. So what are we going to use this for? You're going to put a logo on your robot. We're going to put a logo? Yeah, and or if you're doing, say, like armor, you might want to put uh, some cool and yeah, some cool things across the, the armor. You could actually turn that into a brush and just kind of lay it down. And Sure. If you really feel like that would be good for your design, that logo would work out great. But I think you should make your own. And a little monogram for yourself, perhaps. Why? Just like as an artistic like, signature or something? Yes. Like More because I need you to do an exercise. And I thought that would be oh, a good idea. Okay, so this is, an ex this is really the exercise, really. Truly. So how does it... Okay, never mind. <laughs> I can see how it applies to Kurt's Okay, cool. All right, so we've got this piece, and you know it's 24,000, 23,000, whatever. Um, I might tighten it up using the clay polish. That's going to clean up some of these edges. All right, we'll stick with that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a brush so I can lay it down on top of things. So if I just come to the standard brush area over here, create insert mesh, let's make a new one. And I want to create it in this view flat so that when I draw it on top of something else, it will lay down flat on top of that object. So, if we come back to this polysphere, and I want to lay this logo down now, first things first, it's got subdivisions, I have to get rid of those subdivisions. Then I can lay down this mesh over the top. And you'll notice when it does it, it makes, it masks off my original mesh, and it leaves this here so I can continue moving things around if I don't like that placement. I could also, under the subtool, split it out. So split unmasked parts or masked parts. And now it's its own little object in there. But here's the thing, what if I want it to bend around? You know, like if it was, um, if this needed to roll over the top of this surface. The only way to, well, there's a lot of ways to do that. But the best way to do that is to go under brush, go down to the modifiers, Turn on projection strength, and then when I lay this down, it does awesome stuff, right? Thus being cool. So now the clapping ensues. Nice, thank you. All right, and you can still split mass parts, which you're probably going to want to do. But that becomes very useful, right? For all kinds of fascinating reasons. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop this recording, and we'll do a different one.